Hello and thank you for worshiping with us today here at Word of Life. I'm Pastor Schoen, pastor here at Word of Life, and I want to welcome you in the name of Jesus. We welcome you to check out our website at wordoflife.net for more information about who we are. You can also check out our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash W-O-L Naperville. And you're always welcome to view our services and other Bible studies that we will be posting on our YouTube page. If you go to YouTube directly, just search for Word of Life Naperville. May God bless your day. I no longer fear. Today, I stand in front of you, reaching for the top. The terrain is rocky, the valleys are deep. I look upon the towering hills ahead. The fear of the unknown fills me. But I know you are here. You are with me. You've been with me from the beginning. Shaping me, sharpening me, sculpting me, and perfecting me. My confidence is no longer in my circumstances, but in the strength you give me. No matter what comes my way, I will no longer fear. This is what I was meant to do. This is who I was meant to become. Any pain I feel, any enemy I face, only makes me stronger to reach the top. flows from your presence. I will no longer be paralyzed by what was or worry about what will be. With you, I no longer fear.
Today's reading comes from Psalm 71, verses 1 through 6. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Never let me be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be to me a rock of refuge, to which I may continually come. You have given the command to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, O God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and cruel man. For you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust, O Lord, from my youth. Upon you I have leaned from before my birth. You are he who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. The Lord is my light and salvation Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation Whom shall I fear? Shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. I will wait on you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. The Lord is my light. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. I will wait on you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will remain confident in this. I will see. Light and salvation, whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. I will wait. trust in you. I will trust in you. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the We set our hope on your love. We 
said, I'll hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. You are the everlasting. We said, I'll hope on you. We said, I'll hope on your love. We said, I'll hope on the of fear. We're all afraid of it. And there are things in relationship to this fear that you and I have to recognize, that if you trust in God and let him be your guide and strength, you won't have that fear. And your fear is in relationship to your trust. As your faith in God gets stronger, your fear dissipates, and as your faith in God gets weaker, your fear arises. You want to have fear dissipated and removed, then you rise up and hold up the name of the living God and look to him to undertake for you, and he will. It's our faith that brings victory. It's our faith that casts out fear and enables us to put our trust in the blessed Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
We will worship the man of Galilee who went to a cross 2,000 years ago. And no one can take his place. No one will intercede or interfere. We will not permit it. So it is we have faith without fear. Thank you for worshiping with us today here at Word of Life. We truly are in unprecedented times as just not a country but a world we are continuing to deal with the coronavirus. And so we want to take time today to talk about faith and we want to talk about fear. Because fear is a real thing that we are dealing with. And fear is causing a lot of people to do kind of irrational things or things that maybe they wouldn't normally do. I want to take and start with a couple of examples talking about something that I would say I'm not very fond of, and I think a lot of people would agree with me, is spiders. In Seattle, there was a guy who was taking laundry down to his laundry room, and as he was getting ready to do laundry, he noticed a spider. And you would think that under normal circumstances, he would just kind of maybe take a uh, paper towel and kind of squash it and throw it away. He decided he was going to take out a lighter and a spray paint can, and he was going to torch the spider. Well, he did manage to torch the spider. He also incinerated the wall, and it spread up into the attic as well. As the fire department arrived and was able to put out the flames, they didn't get it out before there was $60,000 worth of damage. Did I mention that this guy did not own this house, that he was only renting it? And I'm sure his landlord was okay with the justification that spider almost touched me. Go over to Michigan. There's a guy at a gas station pumping gas when he noticed as he looked at his car that there was a spider on top of his car. Again, you would think maybe he would just use a little paper towel that you get there when you wash your windows and maybe squash it and throw it away or use his hand or something else to squash the spider or just maybe even swat it off the top of his car. No, he decided that he was going to take out a lighter again and try to light up that spider. He did manage to light up the spider, but he also caught the pump on fire and almost blew up his car and blew up the gas station. Thankfully, the attendant was watching, everything was on camera, and the attendant in the gas station was able to turn off the pump before there was a lot of damage. But fear makes us do sometimes irrational things. Now, we want to mention and we want to say that as we're dealing with this pandemic and with the coronavirus, we don't want to trivialize what we are going through. and We don't want to make it seem like it's not something that we shouldn't be taking seriously. We should have a healthy fear and a healthy awe of the circumstances and the situation that we are in. But we want to make sure that we don't go overboard. If you go to Google and you Google uh, Obama and Hitler, or Bush and Hitler, or Clinton and Hitler, or Trump and Hitler, you're going to find a lot of pictures of people who have photoshopped Hitler mustaches onto all kinds of people. Now, I'm not sure why nobody ever, uh, when they want to demonize somebody, they don't um, kind of compare them to Genghis Khan or maybe Nebuchadnezzar from the Old Testament, two very bad people. It's always people go straight to Hitler. But when we understand and when we look at these things, what people do when they try to compare all of these people, whether it be a world leader, a president here in America, or somebody else to Hitler, they're trying to incite or they're trying to instill in people a sense of fear in order to get them to think or to move in one particular direction. Fear in our world, unfortunately, is a big business. And we want to realize and understand that we are not insulated from getting the message from the media that they want to give us, whether we listen to the radio, whether we see it on TV, or read it on the internet. Fear is big business. And people want, unfortunately, to perpetuate fear in order to move us in a certain direction because when we succumb to fear, a lot of our decision-making process then, unfortunately, is through the lens of fear. And we need to realize and understand that fear itself has an agenda. 
Fear itself has an agenda. Satan, as he is trying to instill fear into this world, wants all of us to think about all of the fearful circumstances or fearful things that maybe we've experienced in the past. Some of the fears that we're dealing with here in the present And he wants us, as a real and present understanding of things, to always go back to those messages of fear so that everything we think about the future is going to be governed by a sense of fear. And all of the decisions that we make are going to be governed by a sense of fear, ultimately, so that the more we go through and we think about the things that are going on in our lives with the lens of fear, the less likely we are going to do the good things or move in a direction that God would have us move, but ultimately have us cower away and oftentimes not do what God has called us to do or think in the way that he has called us to think. But here is one of the passages, a great passage in the New Testament from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, that says, God gave us not a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of self-control. God does not want us to have a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-control. And so our text this morning, the main point that it has for us, and what kind of the Bible wants us to think about is, to what is your spirit going to be attached? Is it a sense of fear, or is it going to be a sense of power, of love, and of self-control? And, and I think, when I think about fear, and I think about the, the market of fear that we find in our world, I, words matter, and, and we see a sense of fear in a lot of the ways that people go about things. I remember back in the 90s when one of the James Bond movies, Tomorrow Never Dies, came out. And I remember it was kind of one of the first times I really saw that words mattered, and that words, um, just like an ideology, can move you in one direction or another. In that particular James Bond Bond movie, Jonathan Price plays uh, a media mogul who wants to expand his media empire into China, and China won't allow him. So what he does is he starts a war, or is trying to start a war between the United States and China uh, so that he can kind of capitalize on it and, and slowly move his media empire beyond where he currently has it. And so the people that are hired by him, they go and they execute a lot of American soldiers, and they blame it on China. And you can see him in his office as he's writing the headline. It says, Soldiers Killed. But then you can see him as he deletes the word killed, and he puts murdered there. And and as I read that and I saw that, I really hadn't kind of taken it to heart before that until I saw that. I was like, wow, there really is a difference between saying somebody is killed or somebody is murdered. And it really could lead you in the way that you think in one direction versus another. And that is what fear wants to do to us. Is it wants to kind of perpetuate a certain stereotype in our minds so that we never move beyond our circumstances. Fear, as I said before, wants us to always remember the fearful circumstances that we're currently facing, if we are, and the ones of the past so that everything we do in the future is going to be governed through a lens of fear. What is your spirit going to be attached to? Is it a spirit of fear? Are you always going to be reactive in the way in which you make decisions and you go about your daily life? Or are you going to think, and is your spirit going to think in terms of power and of love? and of self-control? Is God's Spirit, through the power of Christ, going to move through you, that you be more proactive than reactive, where you get a sense of entitlement over your circumstances, and God can work with you, not against you, and you then are working in in kind of tandem with God, and, and moving forward with God, Fear wants to separate us from God. Satan, when he uses fear, that's his ultimate ideology. That's his ultimate goal, is to move us further and further and further away from the Spirit of Christ, or the power of Christ, his gospel, and his message of grace. Because when we are with the Spirit of God, and we work with the Spirit of grace in Jesus, great things happen. And we as a church, we as individuals, we as a people are moving forward 
We're overcoming obstacles. We're overcoming the circumstances that we're in. Fear always keeps us in a place where we once were, never allowing us to fully move forward with the message of Jesus. And so as we think about the circumstances that we're in, as I said, we want to have a healthy awe or a healthy fear of our circumstances, but we can't let the overarching fear of everything that we're currently experiencing always be the lens of how we're going to make decisions in the future. I heard Pastor Ed Young say this about moving forward in the redemptive power of Christ. He says, when you move forward, because... Fear wants you to stay where you were or or in a a certain box or in a certain place. He said, a powerful way to think about it when we're moving forward is, why don't we just go and we borrow some of the blessings that we had in the past or some of the blessings that we have right now? Why, Why don't we just remember the things that have gone well, all of the great things God has done for us, and we remember how God guided us through the circumstances that we were in and how he helped us overcome. And let's think about those blessings. Just borrow them from times past so that we can move forward in a great way. May God help you think about that as you think about having faith over fear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you pray with me, please? Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray that you would grant us great faith, that we would not move forward with the spirit of fear, but ultimately with the spirit of power and love and self-control, allowing you to guide us in all that we do. Continue to remind us of the great promises you have and the way in which you will help us as we move forward boldly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for worshiping here at Word of Life Church in Naperville. We now worship the Lord through our giving. To give tithes, offerings, or to donate and support, you can do that on our website at www.wordoflife.net. Or you can simply just text the amount that you would like to give to 630-949-3892 and follow the prompts to set up your giving for easy, simple, and secure future giving. Would you pray with me, please? Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to worship you today, and we thank you for an encouraging word from your scriptures that reminds us to call to have faith over fear. And Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray that we would just have our faiths and our trust in you um, given an extra portion uh, by your Spirit. And, And Heavenly Father, we pray as we move forward that you would continue to guide us and lead us in all things. We continue to pray for our world, Lord, as we battle the coronavirus. And Heavenly Father, we continue to pray for our first responders, those on the front lines who continue to give care to those in need. Heavenly Father, we do pray for those who are continuing to battle the coronavirus and are in need of healing. We pray that you would grant them that relief that they seek. Heavenly Father, we pray for government leaders, we pray for local leaders, and all leaders who have to make difficult decisions during this time. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray um, not just for the economies of the world, but we pray specifically for um, husbands, Heavenly Father, who may be out of work or struggling to provide for their families. And Heavenly Father, we know that that kind of pressure and stress oftentimes spills over into the family. And so we just pray that you would be with husbands and and families as they deal with this difficult time. We pray for mothers and other caregivers who are at home with their children and helping them through school. Heavenly Father, we do continue to pray for those who are out of work, that as we continue to um, battle the coronavirus, that you would help them provide. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray for um, all of those who um, have died. We pray for their families. We think especially of um, pastors and other leaders. And and Lord God, Heavenly Father, we just pray that you would um, watch over and and care for them as they um, pay attention to the needs and and, and are attentive to the concerns of those under, um, under their shelter and under their protection. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we continue to pray that you would be with all churches, that you would grant them as they stream services online around the world, that you would um, be with them as they um, 
use this time to reach people uh, that perhaps they've never reached before. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would continue to be with churches as they um, deal with uh, the, the difficult task of, of spiritual care, or spiritual guidance, and spiritual growth, and that you would bless those efforts. For these prayers and all the other prayers that are on our hearts, Lord, we lift them to you now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thinking on the prayers and petitions that we have just lifted to our Lord, let us now pray the prayer that he has taught us to pray. We pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. want to thank you for worshiping with us today and if there's anything that we can do for you please do give us a call at 630-355-9655 and may God bless your week.